Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Aspasia. This is my booktube channel, Asparius is Reading. And if you haven't seen from the title or the thumbnail, today I'm going to be doing a tier ranking video where I tier rank all ugh, 17 or 18 of Marissa Myers books. I don't remember the exact number. I believe the last times that I counted in preparation for this video ended up around 17 or 18. So we're going to be tier ranking those today. Um, and this is completely inspired by her recent publishing. Um, I believe she's come out with a couple of things recently. I think the first one was Serendipity, which is like an anthology collection with other authors that she has written and edited for. The second one was Cinder's 10th Anniversary Edition. And the last one was a interactive e-novella that is called Cinder's Adventure. And if you know me, I'm a Marissa Meyer stan. Like her books become my whole personality trait. I'm obsessed, love them. I think every single book has gotten like 4.75 and above stars they're amazing absolutely love them like let's go let's just go ahead and maximize on Marissa Meyer content and so I just recently uploaded a vlog of me trying to go through um the adventure book well I will be honest um I am fully intended vlogging throughout the entire experience I ended up vlogging like once and having to like update y'all later because I got so up into it so now we're gonna do the tiering video and I think over this summer when I have a bit more free time I'm gonna try to reread all of her books because I, want, I just want to freshen my memory and then also I think I'm going to redo the tier ranking or at least revisit it and see if my feelings are still the same. I might even do like a tier ranking of certain characters or relationships or OTPs, things like that. But as of right now, I'm just going to do the books. Okay, so I am using Canva to do this. I know you're probably like, girl, <laughs> there's whole websites for that. I'm well aware. I was going to use it, but, but... I found out that there is um, a requirement to use a Twitter account and I was for like making a whole new account just for this and then having to do the whole use it and then delete the account and then read unattach it. I was just like, you know, let's just use Canva. Why not? So like I said, there are about 17, 18 books over here on this left side. I do have all the covers here. I think we're just going to go through them one by one. All of my tier ranking orders is the top one, blue, obsessed, absolutely love it, new personality trait, probably talk about it like 15 times a year. The green is love, it is a good one, probably a favorite, maybe not as obsessed with it in compared to some other ones. Then we have great, they're also good, pretty great, maybe not as, you know, high on the ranking. Then we have reread. So there are some books that just from looking at it and from reading, um, Sinner's Adventure, I realized I probably need to reread some because I did not remember a lot of information like I thought I would. So I definitely need to reread some and try to get some of that back because I feel like from what I remember I enjoyed it, but since I don't remember much, is that really a good, you know, like should I really call it that? So there's that. And the very last one is Unread. There are, I think, one or two books on here that I haven't read yet just because they have very recently come out. One of them I'm currently reading and one of them comes out at the end of the year so like I haven't read them for good reason all right so let's just get started oh the very first book we have here is wires and nerve this is book one in a graphic novel series that came out some time ago um, these follow some characters from the center wow these follow some characters from the lunar chronicle series so if you haven't read lunar chronicles I would suggest doing so before this because I do remember that some references and events in here were during the last book or maybe it's after i can't quite remember but i highly suggest reading the series before diving into this because i feel like you might be a little bit confused um these were good i think i'm gonna put them in great book one and book two and i'm saying that because even though they were good and i did enjoy reading in aiko's perspective and seeing her live her life after the events of the series I don't think I love them as much as others and I don't think like if I were to reread them like any time of year I was like oh, I just want to reread a book this probably would not be my first pick um, and I do often forget about these like I'll go to my shelf and I'm like oh yeah <laughs> there's graphic novels um, I just feel like I would probably pick the actual novel itself to read more about these characters than the graphic novel it's not bad it's just not my favorite of the bunch. Um, I don't really remember a lot of these, to be quite honest. I do believe Aiko is kind of on her own, this own mission. I think she's 
trying to help the the people in power was the government the royalty i don't know what they're called by the end of the lunar chronicle series she's trying to help bring in some of the previous villain soldiers like their little henchmen and i think she has to repair herself because her she's a cyborg robot she's a robot full robot um and she needs to you know repair upgrade certain parts that's all really all i can remember so mm, should i move these to unread i mean unread wow reread but anyways we're going out of tangent should i put it in grade or reread hmm I'm gonna put book two in reread just because I feel like I don't remember very much about book two in comparison to book one. So we're gonna do that for now. I might end up changing it. The next book we have here is Supernova. So that is book three in the series. That is the Renegades trilogy. So we're gonna start off with book one. So the Renegades trilogy is, how would I describe it? It's more like a sci-fi fantasy. It's not necessarily retellings like Mercer Meyer is known for. Um, this follows two kind of opposing groups, like two sides of the war, two sides of a battle, as you could say. Um, one side is the anarchists, which are, you know, considered the villains, the bad guys. And then we have the renegades, who are considered the heroes, the good people. Um, I really enjoyed this series just because I really enjoy Mercer Meyer's writing. I really enjoy learning about the characters, the plot. Um, I like, like superhero stories. I also really liked how Marissa Meyer kind of questioned um, whether heroes should be put on the pedestal that they are and whether villains should be always considered villains and how some people may fall a bit more close to the middle where they might have good intentions but their way about going about it is a little different where they might be a, or they might be presented as a villain or as bad just because of someone else you know told them or that's what they call them to be. Um, also, a lot of times the things about villains or heroes may not be completely true, where there might be certain things about that person that is false, and it has put them into this bubble of, for example, this person is a villain, but what you know about them is false, and when you find out what the truth about them is, are they still your, really your villain? I don't know. I just felt like, maybe I'm reading way too far into this trilogy, but I felt like I was getting all kinds of conversation points and questions, and I was like, wow wow just like I, I devoured the series i absolutely love it we'll be honest though um i oh, was it two or three i can't remember if it was two or three but one of these did disappoint me a little bit um it was still pretty good but i was still a little like hmm. don't remember if it was two or three i do remember that my brother was reading this about the same time that i was and my brother was like just pretend this is the book you need to read this right now and I'm like, we just got it, like, in the mail yesterday. He's like, well, I'm done. Read this right now. I'm telling you, you're going to be angry. And so I read book two immediately after him. We were having feelings. And then book three came out. I ended up reading it before him because he was reading something else. And I told him, I was like, <laughs> I just want you to mentally, emotionally prepare. It is good, but there's a lot of emotions. And he was like, I don't know what that means. I'm not prepared. And he read it. And I mean, he looked at me and he, like, almost threw the book because he was so angry. And then we had like a nice long like two hour discussion I think about the ending because we felt like the ending was very interesting and also could open a lot of doors for things. And I was like, hmm, like how does this do this? And it, it listen, I suggest reading the series because I feel like book one, book two leads you one way and book three was like, eh, slap on the back. No, thank you. Um, ooh, I feel like I'm going to put book one in Obsessed because it is amazing. I've, I've read it, what, two or three times within two years. Whoops. I think I read Arch Enemies twice. <sighs> I'm going to be honest. I remember more about book one and book three than I do about book two. But is it enough to put it in reread? I don't think so. I feel like I enjoy that and have a lot more stronger memory of that than I do of Wires and Nerves. We're going to put that... Oh, okay. Let me just... Put it down and just leave it alone. I think I'm going to put... But... Mm, putting Arch Enemies and Supernova together doesn't feel right. But it doesn't feel right putting it to Renegades or anything lower than Love. Because I feel like they don't fit in the same category, but they don't 
deserve to be above and anywhere below doesn't fit right either like the, the closest i would go with below is reread but i feel like i don't i mean i'm gonna reread them anyways it's just like i don't feel like i need to as much as i do with wires and nerve uh, i'm gonna put you in love but these these might get moved these, these might get moved the start of her career the all-time phase the loves the star of the show the main character the queens cinder so this is a series that Melissa Meyer is most known for this is what he has, she has started with um cinder like i said is about a four book series with two like novellas that go in between this follows cinder who is a cyborg living on earth in beijing i believe it's beijing Ooh, don't call me on that um and she gets this job to work and fix on this robot for this man who she finds out is the prince um somewhere along the way she ends up getting wanted um i do believe she does something with her sister that others don't necessarily agree with and a little bit illegal and she ends up being wanted by the royalty police whatever basically it's like one thing after another that just makes her more and more wanted and more and more disliked by people that are higher up than her she's on this basically this lovely technologies kind of interplanet um quest and also she's finding out like you know what this current queen levana i think she's up to no good especially since she's trying to marry the prince i don't know that's a good idea let me let me try to save him i mean he's kind of handsome too but like we're just here to save him so i think um ooh. No, like the more I talk the less confident I get in my description and I'm like mm. I feel like I remember more of the later books than I do the first book I feel like the first book does really good at setting up the story um yeah if you don't know the Cinder series is a fairy tale retelling each book brings in new characters and each character represents or has characteristics of a different fairy tale so for Cinder Cinderella um she does have a cyborg or you know robotic foot and i believe hand and other parts of her body but the foot and the hand I think are the most common one um which is you know supposed to be cinderella's shoe that she leaves on the stairs but two is scarlet who is red white riding hood i don't know why that was so hard to say red white riding hood red white Red Riding Hood, good lord, I don't know where I'm going with this. And The Big Bad Wolf, which I'm a little confused by this cover now because I don't remember there being an actual dog wolf. So the wolf character is more of a person with wolf-like features and characteristics because they do like scientific exper experiments on him, but not like an actual wolf. There might have been a dog character, I don't remember, but I, I don't remember there being one. Third one is Winter. Um, excuse me. Get get up here. Oh, it's trying to decide what size it wants to be. Huh. So Winter is book three and this follows I think our Snow White character. Um is she the one that I believe she is in the castle with Queen Levana. I might be mixing up the characters. Um, so she is like the princess or daughter of a guard, I believe. And her story personally was a little rough for me. But between her and Cress, I feel like Winter went through quite a bit within the castle just because of her association with Queen Levana and what Queen Levana wanted that I feel like she felt somewhat threatened by Cinder and Winter's presence for that. It is a whole hot mess. I'm not gonna say too much because there's a whole lot. Like they it is just it just unravels as the stories go. Every time you think you know, it changed, at least in my perspective. Some people felt like they they guessed it immediately. I'm like, how? I didn't even know how. And then Caress is book four, which follows a girl who lives on the moon or at least their moon and she basically doing some tasks and things for Queen Levana and we have Ferris which is 
Queen Lavana story, which is like a novella with each chapter kind of time jumps over the years showing you who Queen Lavana is and how she became the Queen Lavana that we know in the books. I would say somewhat similar to how Savannah Collins wrote about President Snow. Um, a lot of people feel like it's a very controversial book and they tend to feel uh, one way or the other. I personally really enjoy this just because I like villain backstories. Um, I do think everything she has done throughout all the books is absolute garbage and she deserved every little bit of punishment that she could possibly get. But I do recognize that there were some things that brought her or pushed her to the brink. That's not excuse her actions though. I enjoyed her as a character and learning more about her and why she does the things that she does and why her brain works the way it does. She's still a real crappy character though. Like I ooh. Um if I remember correctly, this one does get I think the most trigger warnings out of the books. I say between this one and maybe Cress. Um I believe in Ferris there is some sexual assault and in that between her and another character because I believe Queen Lavana uses her power to kind of force other characters to do things with her. Some people didn't like that book because of that and also because of her character and people were very angry at people who do like the book which is understandable. Um, that I think is the most uncomfortable chapter or a bit of the whole series so if you're interested in reading that just want to let you know. And then the next book we have here is Stars Above. So Stars Above is another short story novella. This one has different stories where each story is about different characters. Um, kind of like fan fiction almost of the stories um you see the characters during the series and after the series doing different things i believe one of them is like a wedding one of them is like traveling between things doing stuff no really cute um now if i were to rank this not my favorite i think i liked certain stories out of the whole thing but i don't think i really cared for it as a whole so i would put this one in great We'll rank the other ones in just a second because it was good for what it was. It did exactly what it was supposed to do, but would I pick this up on a whim just because in comparison to like Scarlet or Cinder? No. Now Scarlet, whoo, obsessed. My favorite. I think I've reread this one the most out of all these books. Um, it is my absolute favorite. I don't know what it is about Red Riding Hood and Wolf, or well, Scarlet and Wolf, but. When I first read them, they stuck out to me the most. And even throughout the books, I really paid attention and really continued looking forward to more chapters that involved them. Um, and even now, when I decide to reread a random book out of the series, this is always, well, almost always, my first choice. So that one is definitely obsessed. I have wanted a red hoodie for the longest time. Don't they ever got one? I definitely had red shoes. I She became a whole personality trait for a little while. A queen. When I went through my fan fiction phase on Pinterest, I think a good chunk of it was for Scarlet and Wolf. So I'll be quite honest. I bet if I scroll back far enough, I could probably still find those. But we're we're not gonna do that. <laughs> we're not gonna do that. Fairest. I'm gonna put it in love. I know it's a very controversial book, and I know people are gonna have some feelings. But I'm putting it in love because I loved how Marissa wrote it and the backstory about Queen Lavana. However, her actions are horrendous. And she deserves every bit of punishment she got, and then some. Cress. In comparison to these three, I feel like I need to add another category, like, in between, because these is not working out here. Mm, but I don't, I don't really want to have to reorganize. Ah. Cress. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I feel like it is a little lower than Ferris and Supernova Arch Enemies, but I feel like it's above these. So we're going to put you, like, right there. Put you halfway for now. Then Winter. The, yeah, I think I'll put you in great. Enjoyed it. Not my favorites, but it was good. Yeah. Mm, yes, yeah, so we're going to put Cress here. And then... Arch enemies. Oh wait, no, Supernova. I think I'll put you here because I enjoy you a little more. So, 
our next book we have here is Serendipity. So this is the anthology short story collection that Norissa Meyer, um, I believe, wrote a piece for and then also edited by working with a bunch of other authors. I believe this is about 10 romantic tropes that are transformed into little stories. Um, I... I'm gonna be quite honest, I did a softy enough this. This came out, I believe, in January and I started reading it, I think, in February and never finished it. Um, my library loan was like, hey, this is doing 24 hours and I'm like, you can have it. Um, then just because I personally struggle to read short story collections or anthologies, I feel like they never really wow me or really hold my intention. Um, I have read a few in the past, but they always feel very meh to me. And I think it's just because some stories are really good, some stories are really not, or some I just don't care for. And then I always want to continue with a certain story, but then, you know, there's no more. And also sometimes I feel like I still forget that I'm reading short stories so by the time I get to the next chapter or the next story I'm like uh what is this so I feel like that was something I should have known going into this like hey this is probably not gonna hold your attention very much um and it really didn't now I would give this a second chance in the future just because it's short stories about 10 romantic tropes and we all know romance tropes are superior but I just don't think I would really enjoy it as much as Merce Meyer's other books. I'm gonna put this down here in unread because I didn't finish it but based on what I read I mm, mm, it would be in between it would be under great but we don't have an under great category so I mean I could have created one but most of her books are above that so then we have let's see Instant Karma so this one came out last year? Two years ago? Um, this is Marissa Meyer's, I would say, debut into contemporary. And I, like many people, are a little skeptical because we're like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, cut off a lot of that fantasy element. It's very different than what she normally writes. She did have a little bit of, like, magical things, elements going on in there. I did unhaul this. If you've been around, you probably like Asperger. We know you on haul though. We saw that. I did unhaul it. I did like it. However, it was very different than what I'm used to with Mr. Meyer. I feel like she writes really well with the fantasy sci-fi genre. And for her just focus on the romance aspect, I really struggled with it. Um, I believe I gave it like four and a half stars. Uh, if this was written by someone else, maybe I would have enjoyed it a lot more. But it was not my favorites. I'm gonna put this over here in great. Probably wouldn't reread it if I did not decide to do like a giant Miss Meyer reread. Alright, ooh, let's do Heartless next. Now this one is automatically going to reread. So Heartless is a, another YA fantasy retelling. This is about um, Red Hearts Queen Alice in Wonderland type book. Um, now, would this go more with the movies or? I feel like it really depends on what you know about Alice in Wonderland because when I read this, I was a little confused. I feel like I didn't know as much as I thought I did. Um, I guess it really depends on also what adaptions and rewrites that you have seen or read. Um, this is a really good one for what I remember. I remember being in love with it, um, being very shocked. I felt like it was a lot darker than her other books. Um, I do remember the ending being like gut-wrenching, stab in the heart kind of thing. And I'm like, okay, Marissa, what are we doing here? Which is very, very her. I do feel like in her series, she does tend to have those moments where you're just like, okay, all right, stab me right in the chest, got it, thanks. Now this one I feel like is definitely one of those that a lot of people for a number are just like. So if I remember correctly, this book is about a girl that goes to like some king's party and this king wants to marry her. And she ends up working with I think like this jest kind of guy, the one who like, you know, makes jokes inside of a castle. Is kind of talking and starts working with her and list, list, um, talking in the king's ear. Trying to like postpone time for that. You make sure, you know, give her more time before they actually get married because she's like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Ugh, who wants to get married to an old man? Anyways, um, 
she's also a baker she does tend to make quite a few baked goods which I thought about attempting to do during my reread vlogs but I'm not a baker and I'm very good very very good um chance of ruining it or burning it I'm more of a cook than a baker um so we might just leave that off for someone else but um so basically she's doing that and he's also kind of in love with this other character that she starts to meet but uh it starts to take on some of that Alice in Wonderland themes where we have we have card like characters we have characters who make jokes and kind of crazy we have a Cheshire type character uh we do have people that like to off with her head um I do believe there's a scene that's similar to the Jabberwocky scene there's just listen this, this book is a lot um as you can tell I don't remember very much about this book I think I've read it once or twice a long time ago and I I remember really really enjoying it but I think I need to give it a reread and this between this and the next book we're going to talk about definitely really sparked like okay Fisher, you definitely need to reread because I feel like even though I read at least one Mercer Meyer book every year or if not every other year I still feel like I need to freshen my memory sometimes and this is definitely one that I was like okay hmm I also feel like recently in the book community there's been a bit more talk about Heartless and there's also going to be a my brain is blinking. A musical for this. I believe all tickets are sold out for in person, so they are virtual. I'll leave a link to all that down below. And I, you know, there's been a lot of talk about it. And I've been like, wow, I don't remember a lot of this stuff from the Heartless thing. Like, where have I been? So this has definitely been one that's kind of been back in mind. Like, okay, you probably want to reread this soon. You should, probably should reread this soon. Hey. So that's like the main reason why I'm doing my Marissa Mara reread over the summer. The next one is because of. What inspired this video, Cinder the Adventure. Cinder the Adventure is an interactive e novella that is basically what some people call like a fan fiction of her books. Um, this book is about 200 pages. Um, you're following Cinder on different adventures to get to her wedding. You are kind of choosing the path that she goes on, so you get to the end of a certain chapter and you'd be like, if you think Cinder should go out the window and do this, go to chapter this number and you'll click on it and it goes there. Or be like, oh, if you think that she should stay and continue talking with whoever's in the room, click on that chapter and you go there. And so you kind of just do that until you get to, I believe there's what, a total of 12 different endings. And with hopes of getting her to the wedding, which is like the main goal of the book. So this came out a couple of days ago. Um, might be a week ago at this point. Um, and this does feature characters and settings and some plot points or these references to a good majority of Marissa Meyer's other books and when I was reading this I thought I was good to go like yeah I read all her books more than once like I've done some trivia I've seen her posts I'm a stand we're good to go this book came out and I started going through this over the past couple days and I was like um who is that I don't remember that character don't remember this happening either what book are we at and so I realized, even though I'm absolutely obsessed with her books, and like I said, I read her books like once or twice every year, if not every other year, I still don't have a very strong memory of some of these things. I feel like I need a big refresher. So this was the main reason. Between this and Heartless, I was like, all right, we need to reread. I really enjoyed this book. However, it's not a full book. It does, like I said, feel like fan fiction um, because like it's kind of ridiculous and nearly impossible for all these characters to meet. Um, they're all different worlds, very different universes, very different things going on very i feel like they would clash a lot to like the renegade series and the lunar chronicle series i definitely think characters and plots would clash quite a bit because they have a lot of things going on in them i feel like it would make more sense for heartless and lunar chronicles to get together anything outside of that might be a little confused i think instant karma might work a little bit with renegades but i feel like they might have a bit of a quarter shock i don't know but i enjoyed this now it's not amazing. I think I'll put it in great. That's because, like I said, it does feel like fan fiction, and I've read a lifetime supply of Marissa Meyer fan fiction and her books. Not her fan fiction, her, her book fan fiction. Um, and I felt like it was 
exactly what it was supposed to be. And some people said it was like a fan service, like something for the fans, which I could see. But, you know, like I, I, kind of, like I said, I really enjoy when Marissa Meyer does full stories. As I was saying, Curse is a book two in the duology um, that follows after Gilded. Cursed comes out at the end of this, this year, as far as I know. I don't believe the date has changed yet. And I have not read it yet. I have not finished book one. So we're putting book two unread automatically. Obviously, I'll be reading that when it comes out. Gilded came out, I want to say, November last year. And I got an arc. I got access to the audio. I ended up getting, I think, three copies in the mail, on, or no, four copies in the mail on accident because I got the special edition, I got a signed edition, and I got two regular editions. I don't know how I managed to do that. I think one of them because I ordered it, one of them was because I went to a Zoom, one is because I was doing, like, promo for it, and the other one was just, like, I don't know what happened there. I'm going to tell you right now, I am still in Chapter 7. You've probably seen this book pop up quite a bit in my tbrs and my vlogs at least i mention it quite a bit and like i said then and i will say it now i am still on chapter seven it is so embarrassing at this point um i want to read it i'm excited to read it like i would love to know what's going on i would love to see this writing from her i've heard is very different writing a bit slower than what she normally does and there's a lot of build up and it's very exciting and it gives a lot of once upon a time vibes and I'm excited, especially since it's her coming back to writing um, retelling. She did take a break for a little bit. But I think I'm scared to read it to see what happens. And I also kind of just want the second book to be out so I can read them back to back. I just haven't read it yet. I'm just really slow. I don't know what it is. I'm still in chapter 7. I think every time I pick it up, I'm like, eh, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. And I put it back down. It is very exciting. Um, It's a Rupert Silicon retelling. It follows a girl named Serelda who has gotten in trouble with the king because she has been telling some stories that he does not like. And so he tasked her to spend some gold. Uh, and I believe she'll end up being a servant or she'll die or something. I don't remember exactly what the punishment is. Um, but she has to spend some gold. And of course we have our lovely little Rumpelstiltskin character that comes in and gives her a deal. Like, hey, I'll help you spend some gold if you do this. Um, I haven't gotten to that point yet, but that's what the book description is, and that's how I assume it is, because it's going to be telling. Um, I'm very curious to see what happens, though, because I did see a spoiler, which I'm not going to say here, because I'm not going to do that. And I was like, oh, that feels very different for Marissa Meyer. And so I'm very curious to see how that plays into it, but I'm also scared, because, like, it's Rumpelstiltskin, and Rumpelstiltskin is not the most amazing character, so... Yeah, so I think that is my final ranking of all of these. I don't think I'm going to change anything. I'm going to leave it exactly as it is because that's basically how I feel. And once I do an official reread of all the books in over the summer, I will probably revisit this. I sure... Mm, obviously, Cursed won't be included because it won't be out at the time. But we'll definitely, I'm definitely curious to see what happens with these like who changes I definitely feel like the series books will definitely change just because like once I get a fresher memory of the plot I'm like oh okay this is where they go but for the most part things are pretty good if you have read any of Marissa Meyer's books let me know what you have thought of them below let me know what your ranking are if you agree or disagree with mine and that is the end of this tier ranking so I apologize for that very abrupt ending. Um, my fan on my new laptop was just, it got really loud. You can probably still hear it now. I don't really know. I'm going to see if I need to cool it down. I guess that tier ranking was a little too much for it to handle. But um, yeah, that is going to be the end of this video. Um, like I said earlier, let me know how you would tier rank Immersive Myers books down below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with some of the things that I have said. If you are interested in participating in this first of my reread that I do over the summer let me know I'm very really curious to see because I might do some buddy reads like with friends or whatever over the summer I don't think I'm gonna do like a whole read along or anything like that just because the moment like I set certain dates it's never gonna happen like I have to like be very loose with it I'm very flexible with my reading plans or it's just not gonna happen and yeah um leave a 
trying to think of what emoji would work with Marissa Meyer because like there's a lot going leave a book emoji or a purple heart emoji um down below in the comments have a good day good night good evening or whatever time it is where you are and I'll see you in the next one